Hey everyone, this is David, Fairly Secret Music. Uh, today I have some new things and uh, to talk about a record label that I just discovered recently and really like. Um, first thing is I will talk about the used CD I got today. Um, actually, let's get this uh, a little higher, actually, I think. There we go. So this is Unleash the Archers. If you're not familiar with them, they are, uh, I want to say a Canadian band. I'm not exactly sure where they're from. Um, this is Demons of the Astro Waste. And this, I believe, was their first album. Uh, I got it used today for like under 10 bucks. Um, I found out that it is out of print and actually goes for about 20 so I got a cool deal on it. Uh, they have a female singer who is fantastic and I am really picky about female singers um, and I have heard a lot of stuff by these guys um, just that nobody is carrying them and I haven't like had the urge to special order but I found this one used a couple weeks ago put it in the miscellaneous U section at the uh, St. Paul Cheapo store um, and uh, just waited until I was kind of more ready for it I can't remember what I was listening to I think it was a lot of overkill at that time so I wasn't really in the mood for this band at the time, but since then I have um, been in the mood, I should say. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a really good album. I've only listened to parts of it so far, but what I have listened to I've really liked. Uh, I like showing people what you get. Um, in it, you get uh, photos and lyrics. She's actually really pretty too, so that doesn't hurt. Um, this is when they were a four piece. I believe they are a five piece now. I think they have two guitarists. Look at that, they look so metal. Um, this guy does like kind of death metal vocals or what are they? Uh, guitar and screams, they actually say. Um, but yeah, really good production, really awesome. Uh, this was on, um, let's see, what was this label on? When you look on Discogs, when I added it to Discogs, it really doesn't even say a label. It just says copyright 2011 SoCan made in Canada. If anybody knows what that means, right there. Here, I'll bring it up. Is it a label? Is it just kind of a... I know Canada has a lot better... Um, what do you call it? They have a lot better support of the arts and things than the United States does. I have a friend who got a grant to make a graphic novel and a grant to print it up. Uh, so that would never happen in the U.S. Uh, another thing I got here today, this was like the last big buy before I uh, had to have to kind of cut things off. Although I just did make a purchase um, because the last two things I'm going to show here influenced me and I was just like, yeah, I have to get that. So this is, uh, King Diamond, uh, what is this called? Songs for the Dead Live. And look at this. Look at that. Oh, Metal Blade, you fail again with your packaging. This is just dumb. I mean, at least you have the, the trays on this. But you should have just made this be another tray in here. I suppose it wouldn't have folded or whatever, but... So you get this little stupid slip case. This is like a CD 
of tracks from these two DVDs. So what you get is two DVDs, um, a CD, and on the CD uh, you have all of Abigail from start to finish, and then it ends with Insanity, which I think was a track from... I don't even remember. Um, Out of the Asylum, Welcome Home, Sleepless Nights, Eye of the Witch, Halloween, Melissa, Come to the Sabbath, Them, and then it goes all of Abigail. And the DVDs are pretty much the exact same thing. So... Um, but they're, let's see, no, they're exactly the same thing. So this way, at least you have a good, or like an audio version. Here's my thing. Did they pick the right show? I don't know. Fate's Warning didn't pick the right show, in my opinion, when they did Awaken the Guardian live. So, um, now the next thing is also the label I want to talk about. Um, I decided to go and get the Reverend stuff. I looked into getting the original versions and then I find out, found out that Dive Bomb Records had done deluxe editions of both, uh, World Won't Miss You and Play God. Um, why are they called the deluxe editions? Well, because this one has their four song EP also added to the end of it. And this one has the six song live album that, um, or EP that was also added to the end of this. Um, I just got done listening to this. The sound quality is really good. None of that really brick wall stuff. Um, Jamie King does an amazing job of remastering these. I actually messaged him to ask him where this, what the source material was. I didn't know if they had master tapes or just used uh, a CD and went from there. He didn't know. He couldn't really tell me. Uh, we talked back and forth, and it sounds like um, it sounds like they do everything in their power to get the best quality and the best um, versions out there. Um, and along the lines of remastering, uh, everything he told me they try to do or they do uh, with the remastering made me really relieved um because i've had some uh problems with certain labels um honestly it was rock candy uh the icon album just was brick walled uh really loud bass and it was clipping sometimes it's not every one of the every one of the rock candy things don't get me wrong rock candy do a great job but i think uh Dive Bomb Records, which is the label. Um, it's uh, Dive Bomb, Rec Dive Bomb Records .com. They have a lot of cool stuff. Some of their stuff that they uh, have that they've remastered. Uh, it looks like Jamie King is the one who does all the remastering for them, as far as I have seen so far. Um... Or at least he did on both of these. Who knows? Um, if it's him, I totally trust him as a good person to remaster. He seems to know what he's doing. As I said, I've listened to all of this, and I've listened to about half of this. And this was the one that I had when it came out. I never had Play God. Um, but the sound is great on both of them. Um, some bands that they've done stuff with, some of these things are out of print now or, uh, sold out, but you can find them online from like eBay sellers. Otherwise there is a bunch of stuff that they still have. And I, the, this list is 
that I'm going to give you now is just bands that I am interested in that, um, or that were more well known in their list. They have Banshee, Malaya Rage, Leather, who was part of uh, Chastain, and they actually had a few Chastain things, but they're sold out through Dive Bomb. Uh, Deadly Blessing, Cyclone Temple, oh my god, if you guys have not heard I Hate, Therefore I Am, pick it up. They have, it's, And if you go through Drive Bomb, they're like eleven ninety nine with, I think it was like $4 shipping or something like that. I was, I was able to have my local record store order these, um, so I don't know how their packaging or shipping is or how fast they do it, but... Um, yeah, the uh, I know the the one cyclone temple. Uh, I think it's called the land of the something. I can't remember. Um, that one's actually nine ninety nine. But uh, I hate therefore I am is actually like eleven ninety nine, and it's so good. That album is so good. Um, Wild Dogs, which had Dean Castronova, Betsy from Bitch, uh, Arch, uh, Slave Raider. For all the Minnesota people uh, who love Slave Raider, um, Shotgun Messiah, I think they've done both of their the first two albums. Fly Machine, which was a uh, post-Confessor band with the drummer and the bass player. Uh, Confessor, Watchtower, Control and Resistance, and there was Paradise Lost also. Um, the one thing... Uh, I was able to find information about what came in with these because I knew because I'm I'm just a stickler for I really want lyrics, um, I want lyrics and liner notes and pictures and stuff. I don't like minimal artwork, and these guys are awesome. So on World Won't Miss You, you have a uh, cool picture disc. And then the booklet has all the information about who originally did it and who remastered it and all that stuff. So it has that. It has a two-page thing with interviews with Brian Corbin and um, kind of insightful stuff, you know, talking about how they got together and everything. And then you get all the lyrics. And if you have never heard this album, listen to the song Remission, and you will totally be hooked. Um, and then there's from July 1990, uh, a review of the album. Both of them have that in there. Um... This is the cover of the original uh, four-song EP. Another photo of the band with their original drummer. And then the classic uh, bunches of photos. What do you call that when you make a collage of, of photos? Um... Play God is just about the same. Another interview, all the lyrics. Um, when was this one from? August 1991. These albums came out like within one year of each other it was i didn't remember that uh there was a lineup change uh this is the artwork for the original version of the live um ep six song ep uh there was a lineup change because if you know anything about heretic or or um or reverend you'll know that Two of the guys from the first album, Brian Corbin and Dennis O'Hara, 
were from a band called Heretic, and their singer left to join Metal Church, and then the singer for Reverend is David Wayne from Metal Church. And uh, this guy, Angelo Espino, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, uh, he is still in Heretic uh, with Brian Corbin. They have, well, that's funny, I have those black lines because I had uh, tape on my finger because I was recording drums today. Um, they are both in Heretic with the original Heretic singer, and I'm not sure who the drummer is in the new lineup or if they have a second guitarist. But this guy is Jason Ian. Originally, I think he went by the name... Um, Oh, gosh, what was it? Jason Rosenfeld? I don't know why. Either way. But he is Scott Ian's brother from Anthrax. I thought that was cool. He's a pretty good drummer. Uh, out of uh, this one and this one, uh, I would say Play God is the weaker of the two albums, but that might also be because I am so familiar with this For because I had it when it first came out and listened to it like crazy. Um, I think I only had it on cassette, and when I switched over to uh, CDs, I never was able to get it. Um, I had a friend burn me a copy because he had a copy of it, but that thing got totaled um i left it in my car changer and that thing ate stuff up one time um but this one has a cover of fortunate son one of the worst covers i've ever heard i i don't like cover songs but i really don't like metal bands doing non-metal songs really um this one has a cover of black sabbath's hand of doom um, that one does not stand out. It, I never knew that was a, uh, cover song when I was younger because I didn't get into Black Sabbath until way later. So totally worth the purchase. Um, Dive Bomb Records do a great job of remastering and packaging and, uh, give them a look, uh, because you might find some stuff you thought was out of print. And, um, I know there's a lot of people that like the original versions, but sometimes it's just cheaper to get, uh, the remix or the remasters and these so far out of these two, um, they're doing a damn good job. Um, and because I got these, I started looking for heretic, uh, breaking point. And that was the album that Mike Howe was on. And I found uh, Heretic from the Vault. Um, I think it's called Tortured and Broken. And it has the Tortured something EP that Heretic did with a different singer. And that had never been released on CD before. And um, all of Breaking Point on another disc with bonus tracks. And then the third disc is a DVD which I've read Rick mixed reviews, but all I'm really, really buying it for is a good official copy. Metal Blade does it. Um, and I know Scott Waters did a review of it, but he really didn't show if it had lyrics or not. Come on, you got to let me know that stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just ordered it on eBay and that will probably be my last CD purchase for some time. But I'm going to do a review of it when I get it and show you everything that comes in that box. Um, and I have tons of discs that I can do threads on. Give me a good idea for a thread or something like that. Um, ask me questions. Uh give me ideas for just a single video, something that you are interested in. Uh, I know, uh, Tony tainted Lord. Um, I don't know what number comes after that. 
uh, Tainted Lord basically uh, showed a My Dying Bride release and I started talking to him about them and I mentioned doing a video and so I think I might do a discography of My Dying Bride. So hopefully this is informative, uh, helps you decide whether you want to go for these. Listen to Remission off of the World Won't Miss You album because David Wayne's scream at the beginning of that is so awesome. It just hooks you and grabs you. And uh, yeah, I am uh, so happy I got these. Take it easy.